to get on to land in Port Moresby yes. a little bit. Tell me the difference between you and CD and the lands department in terms of uh, uh, the management of land in Port Moresby and how you apply taxes and collect taxes and things like that. Um, they have the ultimate power. We just play a complementary role, role or supporting role. Uh, they decide who alo is allocated, uh, you know, lease, a state lease, and council or uh, surrender state lease. Uh, we decide, for example, in terms of our uh, physical planning, um, we decide uh, when, what sort of development take place, you know, to what standard, uh, the building, to what uh, standard and so on. Uh, we also decide in terms of, so of uh, development of uh, un unsurveyed land, state mm -hmm. land. Mm -hmm. We also decide how that process starts in terms of awarding uh, the urban, urban development lease. Uh, so if there is, let's say, a portion of land at the periphery of the city and a, a person or a company wants to apply to develop it, they will apply to the NCD um, Physical Planning Board, which at this time I am the chairman. Okay. Uh, and then the process starts. And once they've, they've developed it as required by the law, then they can apply for a lease, a, a proper lease, or they can subdivide it and uh, sell the lease okay. to uh, different, uh, different interested people. Uh, but they, they, they normally, whoever gets the urban development lease, you know, the consequence, so the effect is that they normally get the, the state lease at the end. Okay. Um, but also in terms of the tax, they charge a different tax. I think uh, land tax, we charge a rate. It's based on a particular formula. So that's the way in which uh, NCDC also gets... So if revenue. I have some land, I yeah. pay land department, I pay you as well. Yes. Am I not paying double here for the same land? Yes, it's uh, true, but uh, it's because you are paying for the owner. You are paying the owner, which is the state, for the land in which you got a lease. Mm -hmm. you, you're paying a rate for, you know, developing in the city in which we manage. Uh, so, so you know, it's two different things. Okay. The owner okay. and the, you know, manager, if you like. Okay. We manage the land on behalf of yeah, the state. Okay. But in terms of, uh, I think what the public needs to know is that uh, we don't award title in NCDC, but we can help the process, especially those land that are undeveloped. Yeah. A lot of uh, Port Mosby is into a building boom right now. Are we meeting all the criteria, criteria uh, uh, all the requirements? Is that being met? Um, is the city all right? Uh, yes, John, just to point out that one, at this time we are the fastest growing city in our region, Asia Pacific. All the other cities, if you look at them, Brisbane and Singapore and so on, they've are developed cities there come to a stop or already developed. So it's good for us that we are the fastest growing city in the region. And that means it attracts investment because right. people want to go into action where it's growing, not where it's developing like stagnate. <laughs> so it's good in that way. But in terms of our management of uh, land and um, uh, following uh, physical planning, I think we have a big problem. On our part in NCDC, especially in my capacity as a NCD uh, Physical Planning Board Chairman, um, we follow the law in terms of approving uh, development plans, but we don't have the capacity to enforce. Um, so people might get an approval from us, but they might go and do something else. Absolutely. Uh, firstly, and secondly, there are so many people doing something else, and we don't have the capacity uh, to go out there and check on what they're doing and shut them down. Okay. And then and then they develop it to an, a, a, an extent where then we have to demolish yeah. and it becomes costly exercise for them and for us. So I'm trying to develop a capacity in NCDC where we can have a ability to go out and enforce. And that means developing another cadre of workers who are not like professional, like they are not architect or engineers and so on, but they are like are trained to go out and and identify your, there's a form of a form in which they can fill it, fill it, lodge it with the professional in NCDC. They have a look at it and there will be a red light, uh, a flashing that there's something wrong in this particular okay, area. Okay. That, so, that, that uh, particular development is not following 
you know, and then they go and inspect, okay. and then they can shut it down early. Yeah. Uh, this is what, the problem. What sort of people then? Are you bringing them from overseas to no. do that particular work? Or can no, no, no. We can just uh, train a cadre over there. A lot okay. of people here in our city and around the country that we can train them. They don't have to be degree holders from the University of Technology, uh, draftsmen or oh, sure. engineers okay. and so on. So, for, uh, well, from what you're saying, can I then... Um, say that there might be blinks out there that do not conform to standards and requirements here. Absolutely, That yes. they could be yes. dangerous a couple yes. of years down the line. Absolutely. And there's buildings in Asian countries that have collapsed and killed people. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, regrettably, I have to admit that because, you know, um, uh, people are not either, they are not lodging, and if they lodge, they're probably not following. And on our part, we don't have the ability to go out and um, enforce the physical planning law and also in as far as the building building act to the building laws as well so okay. you know there's some risk in there and then we have like in the settlement we are not strictly applying no. the laws because mm -hmm. they are not uh, properly surveyed area uh, they're just constructing anyway and then now you know the, the the government or including ourselves we have to make addition as to how we're going to take on the settlement mm -hmm. so that we lift them in all aspects yes yes yeah. and also i think that's the bigger picture and the settlement is another but the other thing is in urban areas, in, in suburban areas, there's illegal land grabbing and, yes. and people are erecting certain uh, illegal um, uh, infrastructures, if you will, yes. and that's cropping up everywhere. That's yes. got to be a concern to you. Yeah, it's absolutely a, and it's a, indeed a concern to me. Um, <clears throat> uh, but this is the situation, the dialogue we should have with the Department of Lands. Mm. They have the absolute power. They are the ones who control state lease. Um, perhaps on our part, we should be supporting them in terms of um, uh, policing the, the law to make sure that there is no illegal development on state land. Uh, but the fine line with, between what we're supposed to do and what, what they're supposed to do, I think, is a bit blurry at this time. Okay. So mm -hmm. people get away with it because nobody turns up, neither the Lands Department or NCDC. But I think in the provinces, um, and maybe what I'm saying might be an excuse, that it's really... The provinces should be there to police yeah. the state land on behalf of the state. Okay. Um, so I think if that is clarified, that we have that power, that we can stop anybody developing on, um, on state land without the proper authority or without a lease, then it can be easy for us to support the uh, Department of Lands. But, you know, we might turn up and find that the uh, Department of Lands have awarded the uh, title. Yeah. To, uh, that's, that's a big problem yeah. in the city. Okay, and yeah. one of the big problems, yeah. and uh, we, are, we are running out of time, yes. Governor. Stay with us. Our interview with NCD Governor Paul Spakop continues after this break.